Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm on the, the actual workbench and I'm working with a client's finished spindle cable and I always test naturally all my cables for continuity to make sure uh, everything is proper before it actually ships to the client. And I wanted to do this quick video because a lot of questions have been coming up where clients are buying systems and saying, hey, I'm having intermittent spindle problems. How can I check my spindle cable? Well, there's a multitude of ways to answer that question based on what's actually wrong with it but I'm gonna give you a real basic general test that you can do very easily if you have access to a multimeter which everyone should in this genre I mean there's no excuse these are cheap uh, again depending upon what you're doing with it depends on your budget on what you're going to invest in uh, to me what I do again this is my career so therefore I do use a fluke whatever you've got to test it's imperative that you run the test and I highly recommend if you buy a new system run the test to begin with because I've had certain clients tell me that even on new systems they encounter a bad spindle cable so what we do is I'm going to turn it over here to our ground symbol and everybody's multimeter is different you can see I got deal up on on the actual screen and then I'm going to come over here to whatever arbitrary pin I'm going to pick uh, the ground leads and if I go to pin 4 we're going to get tone and that means we have full continuity. So basically what that means for the guys that are novices uh, looking at electronics, it just means that the line that's actually connected, the lead that's connected to ground, is going through this entire cable and coming over this end, and there's no breaks. We're looking for any lead breaks in the line. So when we have continuity, continuity simply means that there's no lead breaks in any of the leads that are connected to this connector. In, in, in this term, it would actually be four leads because, again, it's a four-pin connector. And we have four leads coming over here that would actually get terminated to the BFD. And that's simply what we're doing. These probes, when, when touching each other, are simply con completing continuity because, again, the circuit's being closed. So that's what we're doing a test with. But... This is a brand new cable. I can validate these cables in-house, and of course I do. You guys need to do this with your systems. If you're running intermittent problems, what you're gonna to wanna to do is not just a simple continuity test like this. You're gonna to wanna to do the same principle, insert one probe into the spindle uh, connector's end. You're then gonna select the end that goes to that actual uh, signal. So once again, if I'm in pin four, it would be ground. And what you're going to want to do is figure out a way, because these probes actually can be attached with alligator clips. Whatever method you have to do or have a uh, helper hold the actual terminal to your actual uh, lead. So again, you'll be all set with the probe making contact to whatever lead you actually are testing. And then you're going to want to wor work through the actual cable and flex it as if it's going through the cable chain, because most of you will mount them through the cable chain. Once you do that, what you're looking for is any point of fractures as that cable is being flexed. That is the most significant sign of failure you'll find because you're not using an ultra flex cable or you're using a cable that is in a cable chain that the cable chain is not sized properly. Okay, very, very common problem. I get guys, oh, I've got intermittent problems with the spindle, I don't understand it. That's your intermittent problem most likely. Okay, you'll see that the spindle will get to a certain point and all of a sudden it does a weird thing or the chassis will be moving in a rapid motion and all of a sudden the spindle's on and it's doing cuts, everything seems normal and it craps out on you. That's exactly what you're usually going to find. Flex that cable, once again, all through the motion of where it's going to actually be inside that cable chain, doing the same arc, the same position, keep it as tight and as close as possible, simulating being inside the cable chain. You can even insert it in the cable chain if you like to. Uh, it requires more work, but it's certainly beneficial because it's gonna give you an actual simulation. And then you're gonna connect the probes, as I stated, and flex that cable to and after to see exactly how that cable responds. You should have full continuity just like this through every bit of flexing. No matter how I move this cable, you should have that. If you notice dead spots and you start hearing this, you already know that continuity is not there. Continuity, just think continuous. Should be continuous, okay? That's what we wanna hear. If we don't hear that, we hear this, you're bad, or this, bad. Whenever you flex that cable, it should be solid tone. Okay? 
if you don't get missile lock, again, my guys in aviation, you already know you're basically SOL. This cable is shot and needs to be replaced. Now, when I say that, I get guys that say, well, can I just fix it somehow? No, there's no way to fix an internal fracture because, of course, you don't know where that internal fracture is. Now, if the connector is bad as far as being poorly soldered or you have arcing on the connector, God forbid, that can lead to an immediate fire. Um, again, these are very serious cables. I recommend you take your time. Uh, if you do find that you do have full continuity on the cable, check your pins on the actual spindle connector first because these are going to be covered. Everything on this end shouldn't be. So these are real easy to see. But this, you're going to have to dissect this, remove it, go over it, and check it, and see how the soldering is done, and double check you do not have arcing. Check your pins once again with your probes. You're going to check one probe on this end, and then you're going to remove all of the actual casing, which will get, again will be the housing around the actual connector, and you'll check it on the back end. Before you assemble your spindle cable, it's a good idea to do that. And before you assemble your spindle cable, always use contact cleaner because you want to make sure you're removing any debris on this connector. And believe me, even though you don't see any oils, this stuff will save your butt to make sure that we get proper penetration when we use solder and flux as we should, and we get that safe connection, and you guys are going. Okay, so again, I hope that this video has been helpful for my guys out there, DIY crowd, you guys are trying to do it right, let's do it right, do it safe. Uh, the main thing here is, again, get yourself a multimeter if you don't already have it. If you're not familiar working on these cables, once again, use extreme caution. These are three-phase output cables. They are serious, okay? So please be cautious with that. Overall, testing the cable, very, very straightforward. Watch this video again if you have any questions. If you still have questions, of course, you can message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. Once again, to all my subscribers, I love you guys, and you'll also see links in the beginning of the video as well as the end. Thank you. Take care.